Hey everybody, Dan here for Argo Comics, and we are bringing you a new Indie Hall. As I mentioned last time, we are uh, trying to get these a little more frequent, so we don't have such a crazy uh, stack of comics to uh, get through. We want to give a little more attention to each of the books. Um, as you know, I publish Argo Comics, but I do like to do these Indie Halls and support the rest of the Indie community, and that's why I'm buying all these books. Uh, well, not entirely just to support, but because I enjoy reading them. Uh, and we'll start off with one of my favorite indies. We got Antarctic Press, Gold Digger, number 261, 261 issues of Gold Digger. It is, uh, an American manga that is a, uh, term coined by Ben Dunn who founded uh, Antarctic Press and uh, started off with Gold... Well, started off with Ninja High School, rather. And uh, Fred Perry here does Gold Digger, doing the art colors. I believe he does a lot of... Every step of it, he does. And uh, I do just like the style. He really has a great style. And the writing, it's a little more lighthearted and fun. I mean, there's drama... This is pretty much everything. It's a very well-rounded book. Character-driven, story-driven. Uh, and the characters have a lot of, like, personality. You know, there's action, there's romance, there's everything that you could think of. Well, I guess if you have 261 books, then you can uh, get to a lot. So, again, 261 issues of Gold Digger. And what they had also released within the new solicits, I think I got it actually in different parts, um, but they have it encapsulated. Gold Digger the movie. Okay, animated movie with Gold Digger. And again, Fred Perry. Yeah, let's do an unboxing because this is a box. Um, Fred Perry, the artist... On Gold Digger, he actually drew this animated feature. So, you know, I will not take credit as the hardest working man in comics. It's obviously Fred Perry. If he's going to do 261 issues, and he is going to do a full animated feature, it feels like this, yeah, it was rattling around a little. Hopefully it's not scratched or anything. But Gold Digger the movie. Okay. So I did have, I think I had it in two separate, but when I saw it solicited as one disc, I wanted to have that on well, one tidy, uh, package here. Um, and Sheena Diggers is the uh, archaeologist uh, is, and then got her uh, sister Brittany who's uh, a wear cheetah and Gold Digger. It's just a great series and now also a great movie. Um, all right. Kickstarter. We had Grenade Horse Apocalypse. Okay, which is pretty much a continuation of Ryan Brown's God Hates Astronauts. Okay. Came with a little card or sticker on the back there. This was, again, a Kickstarter. Kickstarters are known to have some extras on occasion, especially if they hit their... Uh, stretch goals, and it is a wild, wreck, wacky romp into chaos and absurdity. That is my uh, description. I mean, uh, just showing a little bit of Ryan Brown's art. Great art. Uh, and the title was from Image for a while, 
Um, so there are image trades of God hates astronauts, highly recommended. Uh, but this, well, actually, you could also see his work in curse words, Charles Sewell writing, Brian Brown doing the art. So if you're familiar with that, you're familiar with his art. I believe that's a Dark Horse series, perhaps, or maybe that's another image. But at any rate, this again, through Kickstarter, perhaps there'll be a general release. Another thing, highly recommended. Uh, I've been kind of showing these as we go along. Threshold Allure. Uh, again, you can see by the uh, blood and guts here that it is an adult mature reader title. Beyond the uh, gore, there's some nudity. Um, Christian Zanier does the art in this one, and he's doing the uh, uh, covers. Well, there's, a, there's usually a lot of covers with this series, I'll say that. Um, but recently, actually, sometimes they're not solicited. You don't know which one is going to be which, which makes it pretty tough. Um, I think Pandora is part of this story. Because this uh, is Boundless, is the name of the company, but it was a bit of an offshoot of uh, Avatar, if people remember that company. Um, so here's some of Christian Zanier's work. Does some great forced perspective sometimes from above or below. Um, he's just one of the most talented artists that there is in my uh, estimation. Um, and again, not all the interiors are always by him, but I'm just always trying to give some art that's not too spoilery, and again with a mature reader, not too uh, graphic either, but there's uh, some work, again, of Christian Zanier. Just a top-notch talent. Boundless is the name of the company. Um, talking about Kickstarters, this one I ordered, but I had gotten the first issue through Kickstarter. So, White Widow, Absolute Comics Group, this is number two. So number one I got through Kickstarter, and number two is a general release. Um, it's James Tyndale. I think he does the writing, and he does the cover. But I think he only did actually one page in this. And Benny R. Powell. Oh, no, he's the writer. So he's the creator, James Tyndale. Jamie Tyndale. Uh, Brian R. Powell did the writing, actually. And Iwan Nazif did the pencils and inks. Uh, Brian R. Gell McGain did the colors. So, uh, but again, Jamie Tyndale did... Uh, one of the pages in the story as well. So the cover is one of the pages. So he might be like me, uh, kind of like a creator who does art, but just like doing a full book in a monthly schedule is not possible. So he collaborates with artists. Um, and, you know, I'm not as good as this Jamie Tyndale here. He's phenomenal. Um, but here's some work by the other regular artist in the book, and you can tell he's very good as well. So don't be put off saying, oh, it's different interior artist. Maybe it's not good. The interior art is good as well. Um, so I'll give a recommendation on that. Sometimes that's, you know, something that people worry about. All right. So we had Gold Digger before by Antarctic Press. And I got another title by Antarctic Press, Exciting Comics number two, Crimson Scorpion. I guess that's the character there. I think part one of that story was in issue one, as was part one of another story. 
Blackjack is the name of the character. Blackjack actually, uh, let's see, Carlos Tron is doing the uh, writing on that. Bradley Golden and John Crowder doing Crowther rather doing the uh, writing. Uh, James Coots doing the colorist. Hector Negrete doing the letters. Um, so yeah, Carlos Tron really does some fantastic work on this blackjack art. Um, that's my favorite art of the book. Is uh, the work here of Carlos Tron. Okay, so as I said, there are three stories in this. Crimson Scorpion, as we saw on the cover. I think it's probably the same interior artist as the cover artist. And then we had like Madame Mask. Yeah, Madame, Madame Mask. Okay, so you had three stories in this bit of an anthology. Um, that's exciting comics number two from Antarctic Press. Uh, this one was not a new release, but I don't think I had a collection of it. I might have had like a couple issues of it, but this is, uh, I saw that Vegas came out, Michelle Fife. Um, he's known for Copra, plus he did a little Daredevil, and a recent uh, Brigade series. Oh no, not Brigade, Bloodstrike, from uh, uh, Image, Rob Liefeld's uh, uh, Corner of the Image Universe. So Vegas, I believe, was before um, Copra, and Copra I uh, first picked up in uh, Bergen Street Comics in Brooklyn, which was the original publisher of uh, Copra, which is now at Image. Um, so I got in early on on that, and he had always mentioned Vegas, and uh, like I said, I think I had an issue, but I didn't have this full collection, so I saw this had come out, so I grabbed that. And he's pretty much, again, an alternative style, not something you're really going to see in Marvel and DC. Uh, but he's inventive. Okay, so... You know, I think sometimes, just like the Hernandez brother, combination of the art and the story uh, brings it all together. So that's Vegas. Let's see. Fantagraphics put this one out. Who happened to put out Love and Rockets that I just mentioned. All right. I saw so this trade. All time comics. They just seem to be an interesting batch of indie heroes. Obviously, I'm doing the indie hole here, so indies are something I enjoy. And it seemed to have, I don't know if I'm going to say a Bronze Age or Silver Age type of feel to what I had seen. Uh, it's kind of a big trade, so it's a little hard to show you anything. Solicits looked interesting. It's a hero. So it's something that I decided to pick up. And it is put out. Let's see. FWC Comics? Okay. Oh, well, it says all time comics. FWC Comics. So. All time comics. If you're a fan of that era and perhaps some indie comics, then you can get that. 
Okay, Project Superpowers Omnibus Volume 2. I told you I was getting a lot of these Dynamite Omnibus, and I enjoy Project Superpowers, so I'm uh, guessing that this... Okay, so this has the complete 14-issue Black Terror series, 20-plus uh, pages of sketches and designs by Alex Ross, Mike Lilly, John May Sr., Doug Kaluba, complete cover gallery, Toronto Meter, Tim Sale, George Tusker, Stephen Sadowski. So those are some Silver Age crates right there we're talking about. Um, so I guess this is mainly the Black Terror material, but he has some extras. Okay, so Dynamite puts this out. Again, I've been getting a number of their omnibuses. All right. So now, I had actually seen a couple of comics online, online auction, and kind of like you needed a certain amount of books to get a discount. So I said, okay, let me try to see what I could find here. Now, I had a number of issues of this, but I didn't think I had the complete series. So... This is a blast from the past. These are all back issues now. We're going in the time machine. And we're going back. Okay. Let's see. I think there were eight issues of this. Eight issues. Going back to Victory Comics, which uh, some people have seen my post on Facebook where I was uh, very into Phase 1 from Victory Comics. But Victory Comics was actually, the publisher was... This man right here, Reggie Byers, and he had his series, Shur Shuriken. Okay, Shurikens are these throwing stars. And this was Female Hero. Okay, we always talk about 1986 being a big year for indie. This is 85. Uh, phase 1 was 86. Um... And I saw even flipping through this, I think there was an ad for Phase 1 in this book somewhere. Maybe it was up. Ah, yep, it was in this issue. So there was Phase 1. Again, one of my indie phase. But Shuriken itself was, again, more of a manga style that Reggie was uh, hitting. And uh, it was really well done. And it was a good story. And uh, let's see. Like I said, more of a manga style. It's black and white. But Shuriken had one. Has issue two. We had issue three. Four. Is it on the back of number four? There was an ad for phase one, number three. Uh, is issue five with a photo cover? Issue six. Now you can see the Victory Comics logo. Issue seven. And issue eight, okay, that had actually an ad for some other books they were putting out, Komodo and the Defiance, Shrike, which is another Rob Durham, who was a creator of uh, Phase One, of another book he did, and another Shuriken. And by the end, uh, Reggie was no longer drawing it. Let's see, actually, that's part of this last issue by Rob Durham. Um, try to see if issue 7 breaks it down a little more. I know there was another artist doing, like, Reggie Byers was still doing. He has, like, a back cover, which was signed by him. Someone else inked it. But uh, he was still doing work. 
Let's see. Uh, yeah, I don't see the. I don't see the crest here. I kind of thought to myself that I was a. Oops. Weird Al Yankovic, it looks like, right? Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find who the other artist who took over at some point was. Should be in credits somewhere. Here we go. Uh, well, this one, penciled by uh, Reggie Barth, co plot by Neil Vokes, who is well known, and inked by Michio Okamaru. So maybe, uh, I mean, still we have pencils by Reggie in this one. Maybe the other issue that I saw that he didn't pencil was kind of like a guest pencil. Because he had pencils by Reggie Barth again. And uh, he just teamed up with this Michio Akamoro inking. So again, maybe I have a few doubles now, but I have them all in one place. And I'm going to give it a read through all together. So that'll be fun. Um, I think I had a second printing of this. I, I didn't have the first printing here from Ocean Comics. We had Mr. Jigsaw, okay, by Ron Fortier, and I think it's Gary Cato. It looks like Cato when I read it, but I heard uh, Ron on his podcast say Cato, so maybe it's Cato. Um, but Ron is well known for his uh, pulp comics. So he does a lot of, he has a, he publishes uh, pulp comics and uh, they also actually do uh, a pulp uh, awards every year. So Ron actually, I guess, uh, was well known for writing Green Hornet. I believe that was for Now Comics he did that. And he did like, uh, Terminator Burning Earth, which was Alex Ross's first uh, comic work. And Ron was the writer of that. Uh, or you could say Captain Ron, as he was called on the Zone 4 podcast, which I was a listener to for a long time. Now uh, he has Airship 27 podcast, which Airship 27 is his publishing company as well. So you can look all that up. Um, but Again, when I was just trying to get enough comics to make this order and get a little discount, I think, uh, again, I had ordered this comic from Indie Planet at one point, but I didn't have this from Ocean Comics, which also put out a Popeye comic, I recall. I didn't have this first printing. And what's interesting in this first printing is it was published on, I don't know if you can see that, blue paper. Oh, it looks like white on the uh, screen here, but I can assure you this is paper is blue. Let me see if I turn it away from the light, turn it toward the light. Well, at any rate, the light is kind of illuminating it. It looks much lighter than it is. It is a blue paper. And also what was interesting in this was that, let's see, I had seen on the back cover here and an ad inside, this Rough Raider, this was Ocean Comics putting out this book, but they had ads for Blue Comet. I don't know if they were affiliated with Blue Comet. Um, I recall Blue Comet, it was published by C.A. Storman. Rough Raiders was like their main title, actually. And I recall the company being where Tim Vigil got his start. Tim Vigil, artist extraordinaire of Faust. And uh, actually Grips before that with Greater Mercury Comics. Um, and here's an ad inside for Bladesman, which was again from Blue Comet. You can see the Blue Comet logo. 
Okay, uh, Bladesman was more of a sword and sorcery type thing. And it's written, or actually drawn, by Del Barris. See, Storman probably did the writing in the inks, because he did most of the inks on that uh, on those books. Del Barris, I know, has... I think he's done a lot of work for... Uh, well, he did some work for AC Comics, but he also did work... I'm trying to remember the uh, company now. Uh, oh, that name is escaping me right now. But I believe Del Barris... Uh, well, they put out Sentinels of Justice, this company I'm trying to think of. Um, and I think Del Barris did work for them as well. Uh, so they had a number of uh, pretty good talents working on their books. And they had an interesting little group of characters here. This is a Del Barris as well. You can see the name over there. So I guess Del kind of uh, worked here a lot uh, before he uh, moved on. Oh, Heroic. That was the name of the company. Uh, Heroic Comics. And they're actually available through Indie Planet, the same as my Argo Comics. They have a large amount of stuff over there. Um, and this, like I said, was Rough Readers from back in the day. Uh, let's see. Part of that back issue... Hall was, now I had one of these books, but apparently they put out a couple of them, and I didn't think I had this one. Hero used to be Hero Magazine. It was kind of like a copy of uh, Wizard Magazine to some degree, where it had comic news and articles, and they had this Axis, which was kind of like a preview book of different uh, stuff that was coming out. And what I think this had different than the other uh, one that I had was that this had a uh, Quantum 5 little preview. The other one I had, I think it has more of like a white cover instead of this black cover. That had an ad for Quantum 5. This actually had pages for Quantum 5 from Joe Phillips. Now, Joe Phillips is really a uh, creator whose work I love. There's a cool looking character, some cool foreshortening there. Um, yeah, Joe's done some work for the bigger companies, but this was this creator owned type uh, of characters. And I believe he's still going to uh, come out with a story Based on these characters, but with a little fine tuning. But he's a really great artist. Um, and again, when I saw the ad for this, I was kind of looking uh, to see what was going to go on with it, but it just didn't uh, come out. Let's see. This issue also had previews. They're kind of unlettered. For Beasties, Death Grip, Quantum 5, which I mentioned, and W. Um, so they had some pretty good talent going here. Again, uh, Hero was a pretty big publication at the time. But, you know, as with Wizard, it didn't uh, stick around. So, let's see. I picked up again in this order. I have a number of issues from this, but I don't have all of them. Fearless Dawn, this is the Chibi Finale, which I didn't have. And I see Steve Mannion is the creator of this book. I've seen him at conventions uh, in the past, and I picked up stuff there directly, but I didn't have this book. He has a very cool art style. Uh, kind of hard to peg down exactly who he is influenced by. Richard Corbin uh, comes to mind to some degree. I'll say Richard Corbin, um, a little Dave Stevens. There's a lot of different uh, influences 
but really does some very nice work. Very detailed in his uh, inks. And uh, Fearless Dawn has been his main title. Fearless was Asylum. He's done a number of Kickstarters as of recent, uh, in recent time. He does great watercolor paintings. So that was the back cover of that. Um, again, rounding out this back issue, uh, I noticed the sidekick and hero put out by Viper Comics it was a one shot. So I figured, okay, it's a one shot. And okay, words Dale Metman. But art by Drew Moss is what kind of caught me because I've seen a lot of Drew Moss work and he's a very good artist. Colors by Jeff Gabu. Letters, Craig Gatlin. Um, yeah, so Drew Moss, I've seen a lot of his work. It's not quite his current style, but still very good work. When I saw his name, I said, okay, let me throw this in the cart. Try to make this minimum for this order. All right. Lastly, we had this Lucky Bamboo Presents. Okay, we actually have an Amanda Connor cover on this. And there's a, I think a kind of a preview. This is issue zero, so it is pretty much of a preview. But um, let's see. We had Hellfire. Okay, I guess, let's see. Creator is Fiona Avery. I guess she did all the writing, because then they just have the other creators for each story going in pencil things and colors. But Romano Molinar did the Hellfire story, and his art. I think he's a Brazilian artist, actually, and I've seen a lot of his art. So that was a good name to see. Then you had The Way of the Sword by Billy Tan, which is a good name to see also. Then you had Sam Falcon by Len DeSalvo, uh, who I hadn't heard of. But let's just give a look at the three different styles in this book. Okay, that's a Romano Molinar. Story is the first one. Second one is Billy Tan, who he's a well-known name. Uh, so you know you're not going to be disappointed with that. And this last story, kind of like a different style. But still looks pretty good. So, again, uh, I don't know if Lucky Bamboo did anything after this, but get the Amanda Connor cover, some other stuff. Figured it was uh, worth picking up. All right, so actually, this is an interesting little piece of. Okay, this was for an 11 by 17 piece of art. Okay, and this is the way to mail it. You don't roll up bristle board when you're going to mail out a commission. I mean, this is like a cork board, very solid. And then the art was put inside here and taped up with electric tape. So, I mean, uh, I was just resting the comics on this. Uh, sometimes I can uh, have a snack on this, put in this in the lap. Sometimes I could draw on this. This is, okay, uh, this actually was uh, Mike McCone's shipping for the cover of Argo 5 number 19. Little did Mike know that I was going to get such great usage out of this uh, piece of, like I said, corkboard that, uh, and now, you know, I just had the comics resting on it while I was going through this hole. So, uh, I will thank Mike again for that beautiful cover. 
but also the added bonus of this. Okay, so that's a little interesting extra at the end of the video here, but that's going to wrap it up again. Going to try to keep coming back more often with these videos so that we can not have to rush through them quite so much. Um, and of course, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Leave comments if you have any uh, questions about the titles. I could always revisit them in another uh, uh, haul video, or actually might you know get around to doing some reviews, um, which I normally do on the Comic Frontline channel. So, uh, but I keep the hauls coming in here just so people could see what uh, indie books I'm personally picking up. Of course, Argo Comics is at Indie Planet. That's A R G O Comics. Um, so you can look that up. I have uh, a couple new releases there now, a couple more that are already there in the, at the printer. So we're going to hopefully get them out pretty soon. And that's going to do it for this uh, haul, though. So thanks for everyone for tuning in, and we'll see you at the next Indie Hall.